my natural heads! Welcome back to another episode of Metal Verbalizer's podcast, and god damn it feels good to do that intro again. This podcast is for you that want to discover new fantastic metal. We feel that there aren't enough podcasts that support the underground scene. That's why the whole purpose of this podcast is to find new and or smaller bands and tell you about them. In this episode, we are going to talk about a band that play a traditional type of heavy metal, but with sprinkles of thrash and doom. This just has to be good, right? In this episode, I present you Scroll Keeper. Scroll Creeper is a band that started back in 2016 in Houston, Texas, USA. When I asked about the band's name, I got as an answer that Gatekeeper and Beekeeper was already taken. They wanted to be keepers of something, so I guess Scroll Keeper was the way to go. The band is influenced by some of the old greats from the golden age of heavy metal. The bands that were named were like Saxon, Iron Maiden, Accept, Testament, and Voivoid. In there we got two of my favorites, which are Iron Maiden and Accept. I do also like Saxon, so even though we've just started, it sounds great to me. And speaking of Accept, actually, have you checked out Dirk Schneider and the Old Gang? There you got some real good stuff. If you, if you ask me. To give you an idea of what the band sounds like, I asked the band about it. The band that they named was Broca's Helm. But I would take that band, but mix it up with sprinkles of the bands that we talked about being their influences. Which I guess makes a lot of sense. The latest al- album that the band released is called Way To Go. And it is a Native American concept that is about the demon of greed. Apparently it possesses people who wants to consume and own more. I think this is super cool. I always like a good concept album. It gives the album a theme and a little bit of extra excitement. The lyrical themes is mainly historical and specifically war and conquest. Hey, Sabaton? Maybe not. They gave us a few examples. Fortunate, Fortunate Favors, The Bold, is about William the Conqueror. Path to Glory is a song about Con Croom's victory over uh, Nicephorus. I am sorry about those pronunciations, because Jesus Christ. They also sometimes use esoteric and philosophical themes as well when they write their new music. Speaking of their music, why don't we take a closer look at the music that the band has put out. We are going to start back in 2018 when they released their debut. Their debut was an EP called Path to Glory. In my opinion you can really hear the mix between mainly heavy metal and thrash here. Uh, The vocals almost have a bit of punk vibe to them and this is gonna carry through their releases as well. When you listen to this album you're probably gonna hear what I mean. In this release we find songs like Not of This Earth and Fortunate Favors the Bold, which I men- mentioned earlier as well. Let's jump to 2019. Uh, this time we are going to talk about two singles that the band released. The first one we are going to mention is Lady Death. This one absolutely stays true to their sound, but is something that I really like is that they have put in a very melodic line in the song that I personally would say is maybe more common in some power metal, actually. I think that it is, it is great that they have managed to merge that into their sound, actually. Because that's not, that's not always easy. Because this kind of a power metal melodic thing is not common as, at all in thrash and heavy metal, I would say. Next one was also released in 2019. This one is called Helion. This one is not to be confused with The Helion by Judas Priest. I just love how the the drums are going into absolute thunder mode and dr- 
and drives the song with intensity and speed. Now we have reached 2020 and we start off with their self-titled single. This one is uh, like if Black Sabbath and Motorhead got mixed but with Randy Rose and some kind of an extreme metal guitarist. If they were, those two were gu the guitarists. What I'm basically saying is that it is heavy as fuck. Time for exciting stuff. We are still in 2020, but now it is time for their first ever full-length album. This one is called Auto da Fe, once again with my pronunciations. This album starts off with a beautiful acoustic piece as an intro. Then we get slapped in the face with Lady Death. This album looks like it has everything from acoustic album intro to blast beats. With that said, there should be something for everyone in this album, actually. The album has 12 tracks, and you will find songs like Valhalla's Gates, Dev Devil's Calculus, and Blood and Sand. Also, you will find all of their previously released songs in this album. Time for 2022 and more singles. This time we got Misery and Shadow Dancing. Something that I love that they do is that they seem to experiment a bit with their sound a bit. With these two singles, I would say that Misery might speak to you that prefer more heavy metal, while Shadow Dancing, I think, would speak more to you, our thrashers out there. I love that they also are starting to experiment with bringing in some extreme vocals in their music. Not as a main vocal, but as a little extra thing to spice, th spice some parts up a bit. Which is something that I personally love. How about an other e album slash EP? This one is called Way To Go. Another great release. That we mentioned earlier as well. Of course, you also have the previous two singles that we talked about, but you also go go have songs like your Blood First, and no, that's not a mispronunciation, it's actually First and not Thirst, Way to Go, and Sleep and Dream. We are still in 2023, where we have another single. This one is a thrashed up version of Jingle Bells. This one they called Jingle Thrash. I think that it is damn hilarious in a good way. This is the kind of humor that tickles my laughing muscles. I love it. And I think that this was some kind of a uh, later release as a Christmas special of sorts. So it's awesome. Now we have actually reached 2024 already and it is time for their final release so far. It is a single and it is called Blinded by Fear. This one stands out a bit to me because this one at least in the intro flirts a little bit more with that slower groove of doom metal before it goes into more of a thrashed up heavy metal with, with almost blast beats and all of that good stuff. All right, now we have talked about all of the band's releases that they have given us so far. This is a perfect time to bring back my good old segment that I like to call Eric's Top 5. The main purpose of this is to give you an idea of where to start when you're going to listen to, uh, in this case, Scroll Keeper. So here we go. Number one, Path to Glory from Path to Glory. Number two, Lady Death from Auto da Fe. Number three, Valhalla's Gate from also from Auto da Fe. Number four, Shadow Dancing from Waco. And number five, Blinded by Fear, which is their latest single. This was my top five list. Now I want to hear about your list. What is your Scroll Keeper top five list? Join us on our social medias and tell us about them because I love that stuff. All right, so what is going to happen in the future for the band? That's kind of important to talk about, I think. When I wrote to the band to prepare for this episode, unfortunately a few months ago, they had just parted ways with their drummer and had a new drummer already that they were bringing up to speed. So if everything has gone right with that, which I hope, 
they should be back out playing shows in support of their album. We also might get some uh, new singles if we're lucky. I don't know. I hope for that. As a final word from the band themselves, they just want, would like to thank you, their fans, of your continuous support because they are very appreciative of what you do for them. Okay, so it is time to summarize. Scrollkeeper is a band for you that likes both thrash metal and heavy metal. Maybe this is a band for you that likes heavy metal and would like to get into more thrash metal. I think that this could be a good gateway band, maybe. So, if it sounds like something that you might like, do not hesitate to go and check them out. If it is not what you usually listen to, go and give them a chance. Anyway, because like I said, it might be a good gateway band if you like heavy metal but would like to enjoy more thrash metal. You might find something new that you will enjoy. I find new bands and kinds of music all the time when I do this uh, podcast. Uh, most importantly, if you do like this band, make sure that you support them in ways that works for you. Easiest way to support them is to follow them on their social medias. It is very easy and is completely free. And as in, in return, you will get updates on what's next for the band, which is awesome. And of course, I would like you to... I would like to encourage you to buy their music because then you can financially support the band so that they can get out and play more live shows and maybe travel a little bit more to play music as well. If you like what we are doing here on Metal Verbalizer's podcast, bringing you new metal to enjoy, don't forget to follow us on our social medias as well. This way, you will get updates on what bands we are going to verbalize next. Maybe you have a band in mind that you would like us to feature. Don't wait. Tell us about them. We always take suggestions in consideration when we plan our episodes. And the, did I mention our YouTube channel? There we also have a video version of our, all of our tour stories. You do not want to miss this. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to Metal Verbalizer's podcast, Verbalizing Scrollkeeper. Keeper.